As you may have experienced, there are few things as enjoyable as a good night move. Let's look at a rare but important example of the power of the knight. In this position, black's king looks to be well defended. There are two pawns in front to shield the king. There is a rook on b8 guarding the back rank. And black's king is in the corner away from the attacking queen. However, white does have a knight that can check the king like this. After knight f7, the king is forced to g8. Notice the king is lined up with white's queen on the a2 to g8 diagonal. That means once the knight moves, there's a discovered check. But where should the knight move? If the knight moves back to g5, then the king will simply move back to h8 and we're in the same position. Do you see a double check in this position? That's right, white can play knight to h6. Both the knight and the queen check the king. The king is forced to h8. What happens if the king moves to f8? After king to f8, it's mate in one, queen f7. This is why it's important for the king to move to h8. After the king moves back into the corner, it doesn't look like white can make any progress. If only white could play knight f7 check without the king being able to move to g8. What if white could attract the rook to g8 and then play knight f7 check? It would actually be checkmate. Study the position carefully. Pause the video if you need. Can you find a way to force black's rook to g8 so the white knight can deliver a checkmate on f7? After taking a moment to think, if you found the queen sacrifice queen g8 check, fantastic job. This forces the rook to capture the queen, and now the king is smothered by its own pieces. It has nowhere to move. Knight f7, the knight jumps over black's defenders and delivers checkmate. This is known as the smothered checkmate. Let's review that one more time. To review, white plays knight f7 check, attracting the king to the same diagonal as white's queen. White plays a double check with knight h6. The king is forced back into the corner. And now the most important move, attracting the rook to g8. Queen to g8 check. The rook is forced to capture, and now the black king has no legal squares. White plays knight f7, delivering checkmate. Let's take a look at another position. This position looks exactly the same, but there is one key difference. Black has a queen on b8, not a rook. Does this change really matter? It turns out that it does. After knight f7, king g8, knight h6, double check. So far the play goes exactly the same way as the position with the rook. After king h8, white is best advised to repeat the position with knight f7 check. The reason why is if white tries to smother mate with queen g8, black can play queen g8, and now white is in for a rude awakening. Knight f7 is no longer a smothered checkmate because the queen can simply capture the knight. It's important to remember that a smothered mate only works if black's piece that sets up the smothered mate does not protect the knight square it uses to deliver checkmate. Since the queen does protect f7, the smothered mate does not work. Let's look at one more position together. In this position, black plays f6, attacking white's knight. Black didn't appreciate that f6 opened up the a2 to g8 diagonal. This means white can play queen to b3 check. Does this position look familiar to you? We're going to have another smothered mate. If the king moves to f8, we already know it's going to be checkmate. So king h8 is the only move. And now after knight f7, the knight attracts the king back to the same diagonal as white's queen. We deliver a double check. The king is forced to h8. And now our favorite queen sacrifice, queen to g8, forcing the rook to capture the queen. And now the black king is out of squares. White finishes the game with knight f7, checkmate.
Now that you've learned one of the favorite checkmates in chess, it's your turn to practice delivering the smothered mate.